If you're on the Octopus Flux tariff in the UK, you've probably seen the latest rates announced just a few days ago. I've had quite a few people reach out to me and they're not happy. The day export rate has now dipped to below 10 pence. And yet other Octopus tariffs are offering export rates of 15 pence, 50% 50 higher. I mean, what's going on? Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. In many countries, you're now spoiled for choice with smart energy tariffs. Here in the UK, for example, Octopus Energy offers a whole range of tariffs to suit everyone. Whether you've got solar and battery, an EV, a heat pump or even storage heaters. One of their tariffs launched a couple of years ago called Octopus Flux set the scene for other energy providers all across the world to follow. I've covered this tariff in detail in this video here. The link is in the description, but here's a quick recap. There's a flat import rate during the day called the day rate, and that rate is not too dissimilar from the import rate that you get on many standard tariffs in the UK. Then between the hours of 2am and 5am there's an off-peak period where that import rate drops by around 40%. This discounted rate is designed to boost demand during low national grid usage where the grid is at its cleanest, and you could take advantage of it in a number of ways. For example, charging a home battery, or an electric vehicle, or perhaps heating your water electrically. Some users also run heavy appliances at this time, such as dishwashers. Now whilst that works in principle, I'd always recommend you check the safety guidelines of those appliances before operating them in an unattended way like that. There's also a peak period between the hours of 4pm and 7pm, where the import rate increases by around 40%. This surcharge is designed to discourage use of the grid when demand is high and fossil fuels are having to be burned to meet that demand. And typically users ensure their home battery is sufficiently charged to power their home throughout this peak period. And users typically also choose to avoid using heavy appliances such as dishwashers and clothes dryers at this time too. As well as this time of use import rate, there is also an export rate which pays users for sending energy back to the grid. Historically throughout the day, this rate is set to be roughly the same as the off-peak import rate, but during the off-peak period, the export rate is reduced to a very low value to discourage exporting at a time when there is little national demand for it. And finally, to complete the picture, during the peak period, the export rate is increased to be roughly the same as the standard import rate. The idea here is for users to export if they are able to, which lessens the amount of fossil fuels burned, and pays an attractive reward much higher than the export rate available on other Octopus tariffs. Now what's troubling to my viewers who are on the Octopus Flux tariff today, is that the most recent rates show a decline in the export rate during the day, down to below 10 pence now. That feels somewhat unfair, especially since other octopus tariffs offer export rates as high as 15 pence during the day, 50% more. Additionally, with the daytime export rate now a third lower than the off-peak import rate, unlike the historical balance between the two, it creates a new issue. It no longer encourages users to charge their batteries overnight, particularly when the next day is forecast to be sunny. You'll remember that strategy from this video here. Again, the link is in the description. It's now cheaper for users not to do that, and we can show that in this modeling utility here. I've already entered the latest Octopus Flux rates, and if I allow the home battery to charge naturally with solar generation, you can see the estimated overall income for the day is £2.76. But if I now force charge the battery between 2am and 5am in order to take advantage of the cheaper import rate at the time, you can see that with the latest rates, I'm now being penalized for helping the grid. The overall income for the day has now dropped. I created this modeling utility to help people understand how their specific solar and battery setup and energy use profile could perform on a specific smart tariff before making the switch. It's compatible with any smart tariff worldwide, and if you'd like to explore it yourself, simply sign up to my Patreon here for easy access. Now, like with any energy tariff, rates will inevitably change over time based on factors like wholesale pricing. And using Mick Wall's brilliant Energy Stats UK resource, I've mapped out the changes in tariff rates for Octopus Flux since it was introduced way back in February 2023. And you might like to hear that I recorded an interview with Mick all about this service, which will be published on my channel very soon. By zooming in on the individual 24-hour periods across this timeline, 
we can observe the actual rates in effect at those times. And as we do this, I note two key trends. The daytime export rate has historically aligned closely with the off-peak import rate. And the peak export rate has typically matched the daytime import rate. However, earlier this month, this pattern shifted. The daytime export rate fell to approximately 40% below the off-peak import rate. And many people believe that this latest change makes the tariff less attractive in the market, putting people off from switching to it, and worse, meaning many already using the tariff will switch to something else, or even away from Octopus Energy. It doesn't feel like the Octopus Energy I know, so what's the real story here? Well, I think the real story has to do with the future of export rates in the UK, and indeed a lot of other countries. Six months ago, I released this video looking at a phenomenon known as the duck curve. I won't go into detail about the duck curve here, but I do recommend you watch this video if you haven't already done so before continuing here, as it explains the concept and the significant ramifications of your solar system here in the UK and other countries around the world before long. In essence, countries with rapidly expanding renewable capacity, particularly solar, often face excess grid supply during midday when demand is low. And this creates an immediate balancing challenge for grid operators, causing wholesale prices to plummet in order to drive up demand. Regions across the world with high solar irradiance, like southern USA and Australia, have increasingly felt the duck curve's effects in recent years. But now, even in countries like the UK, which have much lower solar irradiance, these impacts are emerging. Looking again at data from Energy Stats UK, and you can see wholesale prices dropping to near zero more frequently, and summer hasn't even arrived yet. To compound that, at the beginning of this month, the UK broke its solar generation power record for the day, generating 12.57 gigawatts of power at lunchtime. But that record was broken again just a few days later, this time 12.68 gigawatts, and we can expect that record to be broken several times more this year as we head towards the summer. The ongoing rise in solar generation capacity, combined with periods of high wind generation, mean that the duck curve effect is now going to be an increasingly common occurrence in the UK and other countries going forward. And whilst it's fantastic to see countries increasingly being powered by renewables, we must recognise that this directly impacts export rates. And I believe that's why Octopus Energy have set the rates as they have with Octopus Flux. They're thinking ahead. They actually want users to hold on to their stored energy until the peak period, where the export rate remains a very attractive value, higher than the day import rate, and almost twice that of the 15 pence export rate offered on other Octopus tariffs. I'm a huge fan of Octopus Energy. They constantly show the market how things should be done. And if you want to switch to them, it only takes a couple of minutes. They even take care of closing things down with your current provider. And if you use my referral code here, you'll get £50 credited to your account. How cool is that? I'll also get £50, which means you'll be directly supporting the work of this channel. Thank you to everyone who switched so far. It means a lot. So what does all this mean for the future of export rates in the UK then? Well, I'm about to say something that might be a little unpopular, but I believe the flat export rates offered by Octopus Energy and other energy providers in the UK, where a fixed amount is paid no matter what time of day the export happens, will reduce substantially or even disappear altogether. It's controversial, I know, and I'd love to have some debate on this. Please let me know in the comments what you think and we'll get some discussion going. Watch though if you're ever including links in your comments. For some reason, YouTube tends to automatically delete them. Instead, perhaps just reference the titles of any links that you might want to supply. Okay, so if flat export rates are substantially reduced or even disappear, what are they going to be replaced with? Well, I think this is where Octopus Energy is already showing us the way with these latest updates to their Octopus Flux tariff. It's time of use export rates, where the rate paid depends on exactly when you export. And those rates will be chosen to drive the right behaviours, specifically avoiding exports when the grid is oversupplied and encouraging export when demand is high. Now currently, for tariffs outside of flux, in addition to the 15 pence flat export rate I mentioned earlier, Octopus Energy also offers a dynamic export rate called Outgoing Agile. Here, the export rate changes every 30 minutes during the day and night. The problem with outgoing Agile up to now, though, is that I don't think it's been that popular. 
If we look at historical data on Energy Stats UK, the rates don't really compete with the flat 15 pence export rate alternative. Now, if Octopus Energy modified the algorithm to beef up those rates, then I think they could completely remove the flat 15 pence rate and everyone would still be happy. Let me know in the comments what you think. So what does this likely future for export rates mean for you? Well, if you've already got a solar installation, in the video I mentioned earlier, I shared some good strategies for maximizing self-consumption of your solar generation. These include running heavy appliances like washing machines and dishwashers in the middle of the day when solar generation is at its highest, or charging an electric vehicle in the middle of the day as well as during the night, or using a solar diverter if you don't have a heat pump to heat your water during the day. All this will reduce your reliance on exporting and boost your savings. You can also look to increase your home battery capacity to store that excess solar generation that would otherwise be exported. This allows for greater self-consumption and maximizes your savings. However, during the summer, even a very large battery will fill up quickly. And if you're not able to use all that stored energy, it could remain full, limiting further storage. Don't forget though, that with a larger battery, you're now in a position to hold on to and then export substantial amounts of energy precisely when export rates are high. And by employing such a strategy, you could well recoup the cost of that extra battery capacity in just a few years. And if you don't already have a solar and battery setup, but you are planning to get one, it's the perfect time to model the best solution for you in light with what might happen with export rates down the line. On that note, if you live in the UK, because solar is growing at a rapid pace, there's a real risk of you getting ripped off by an unscrupulous installer if you're not careful. So if you're not sure which installer to go with, feel free to use my new installer directory service, Get Ready for Solar, which will list installers serving your location that I would trust with my own money. Many people are using this service daily and I'm getting some really good feedback from it. I hope it's able to help you too. Thanks very much for watching this video. I think it's one of the more important topics for consumer solar at the moment, and I hope it gets you thinking about your own solar strategies. A big shout out to all my Patreon members, including those on the terawatt and gigawatt tiers here. It's your financial support that allows me to make all these videos and the other solar work that I do, and I can't thank you enough. If you'd like to become a Patreon member, it's easy to do. Just sign up using the link at the top right, and you'll get access to the modeling utilities like the one that you saw earlier in this video. Until next time then, all the best with your solar journey.